Hey guys, Callum here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a 3D printed terrain map like this one. So I live in a place called Stroud, which you'll see is at the center of the map here. It's always been called the heart of the five valleys and I wanted to see what that actually looked like in 3D space. So I did some digging and found some geodata and it turns out the UK actually has loads of geodata all available for free and I've put the link in the description. Once I had this data, uh, I thought, you know, why not 3D print it? So I downloaded some software, QGIS, and got started. So that's the first step, download QGIS. Let's go. So navigate to the link in the description and download QGIS. There are a range of platforms available. I use Mac, so I have gone for obviously the Mac package and I'm using the version 3.4, which is their long-term release. There's also a massive amount of documentation available for QGIS and I've put that in the description as well in case you fancy trying out anything different. Once you've got QGIS downloaded and installed, you can then go on to downloading your data. There's two possible sources that I found. One is the uh, government data and the other one is Ordnance Survey. The OS Train 50 is what I opted for in the end. You want to click the download button, select the correct supply format, scroll down, continue and then download. I'm not going to do this because I've already downloaded the data. I found that the Ordnance Survey data was more complete, but the government data is really handy for finding out which area of the map relates to the Ordnance Survey data. So if you zoom in and then use the area selector to choose the bit of data that you want, you'll end up with a square like that. If you then zoom in, go to the layer list and make sure that the top option is selected. When you zoom in, you will then see a reference grid on top of the area that you want. If you zoom out too far, this area grid will disappear, so you have to make sure you are reasonably zoomed in. We can then say that we want a particular section, for example, let's say we want uh, SK. go over to the data folder, scroll down to SK, open it up and find a section of SK, say SK06, open that up and take the ASC file, that's the one we want. Now it might be that your data spans multiple grids and in which case I recommend putting that all into one folder which is what I did for the Stroud area. So I took a range of the reference grids and put them all into a folder called Stroud area. That just makes it easier to select in QGIS in a minute. Okay, so now that you've got your data ready, you can move over into QGIS. So you're going to want to install the plugins. Uh, this is optional quick map services but I quite like it uh, so you just search for quick quick map services and then where that says reinstall plugin it will say install it'll say install plugin like that so you'll go for that one and then the second one and one that you definitely need is the 3d printing one so if you search DEM you'll get DEM to 3d and you can click install plugin obviously it says reinstall there again but that's because I've already got it so then you go to project new project and we need to set our coordinate reference system. So if we go to project and then properties, we can make sure that we have the correct coordinate reference system. Now the one that it is, is the British National Grid, this one here. Uh, it won't show in your recently used coordinate reference system, so you'll need to search for 7405, and then you can select the British National Grid, click apply, and then okay. Next step is adding the data in, so go raster, miscellaneous and merge. You 
use the ellipse to bring up an additional menu. Navigate to the folder where you've put all your data and then select all the ASC files that relate to the terrain data you want. Click OK and then click Run. You can ignore all the other stuff because it causes issues if you don't know what you're doing. Once that's processed, you can close that menu and you've got your terrain data added in. Now this is where I found the optional plugin of the Quick Map Services comes in quite handy. If you go across to Web, Quick Map Services and then OSM and OSM Standard, it shows a map in behind your uh, terrain data and that just makes it easier to understand what you're actually doing. If you then double click where it says Merge down in the Layers tab, you can change the uh, transparency and uh, I normally set it to about 50% because that allows you to see both the data and the map behind. Now we know what data we're working with, we can go ahead and start 3D printing it. So open up the toolbar again, you want raster, DEM to 3D and then DEM 3D printing. Move that out to the side, click this little button here which is the area selection select the area you want to print and then you're going to want to set some of the parameters so spacing just use the minimum recommended it might be different to what it says there on screen and then set the width the width and length so that if it's inside your bed if you've got a 200 mil bed obviously you need to make sure that both of those are less than 200. The exaggeration factor is how large it makes it look so for example if you've got a massive exaggeration factor even a small hill will look like a mountain uh, it just scales it on the z-axis for height base i used one um, it's meant to work with zero but it, i found that it didn't so choose a minimum of one i reckon export to sdl i'm not going to do this as it does take a while but i will show you one that i generated earlier And there we go, there's the file that you can drag into your slicer and print to your heart's content. The one I showed at the start, I've also added some names. I just made some 3D model names in Tinkercad and then literally arranged these in the slicer. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've shown you how you can make your own 3D printed terrain tile and I hope you use it to create some really cool stuff. I think it would work great for mountain ranges and stuff like that as well. Yes, if you did enjoy the video, please do like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Cheers.